When Deion Sanders unveiled his bust at the Hall of Fame, he joined a remarkable group that included Troy Aikman. I am humbled to be welcomed to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Barry Sanders and Derek Thomas. Today, Derek Thomas joins the company of the finest who have ever played the game. Yes, they're all in the game's pantheon, but they hold perhaps an even greater distinction because while they all got to Canton in different years, they all arrived in the NFL the same year, 1989. Maybe the greatest draft class ever. Everybody looks and says, well, you know, of course, Troy Aikman was the guy. Well, Troy Aikman didn't even make all Pac-10. Rodney Peet was all Pac-10 quarterback. So if you were honest about it and you look back uh, during that period of time, there were all kinds of opinions about who we should take. Uh, we had people on our own staff that wanted to take Tony Mandridge because he was hyped up. Uh, you've never seen an offensive lineman this big and this fast and this agile. He was, by acclamation, can't miss. We went and worked him out at uh, Michigan State and, and were totally impressed. Uh, took him to dinner. He ate a lot. I remember that. If Tony Mandridge was the gut buster, Barry Sanders was the game breaker and the wild card in the Chiefs' draft plans. Frankly, we wanted Derek uh, right after Aikman, and we knew Troy was going to go first. Um, we were really sweating the third pick. It is my special privilege to announce with great joy the 1988 winner of the John W. Heisman Memorial Trophy is Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State. The Lions took Barry Sanders and his Heisman at number three, clearing the way for KC to get their man. Then we knew that uh, we were there. After working him out, we couldn't tire Derek Thomas out. We knew he was the right guy. Which brings us back to the top two, Aikman and Mandridge, in that order. The Packers went with the big man, and it was a big mistake. Mandridge had appalling technique, and without his steroids, no chance against naturally stronger and faster defenders. Yeah, I didn't want to take an offensive tackle as the number one pick in the draft. I, I, I want players that can put the ball in the end zone. We needed a quarterback to build a franchise around him. And I had been in Troy Aikman's home when he was a you know, junior in high school. I tried to recruit him for Oklahoma State uh, when we were at University of Miami. I tried to get him to transfer to University of Miami. Uh, and so I told him, I said, listen, you said no twice to me. You're not going to say no the third time because I'm going to pick you. I flew out to California and worked him out, and, and there wasn't any doubt in my mind we were going to pick Troy as number one. How about it, Troy? Everything going all right? Of course, the thing that uh, we're real excited about are the talent and the way these guys are working. Uh, it's young talent, so we've got to put it together on a competitive basis, but uh, that's given us a lot of optimism. Optimism? With Troy Aikman at the helm, the sky was the limit. And in four short seasons, the Cowboys were the game's best team, a dynasty that won three titles in four years. What a ride it's been. Troy Aikman's the MVP. Jimmy Johnson's taking his team from the absolute worst to the absolute best in four years. And it all started by choosing wisely. And I don't think you build a team around one offensive tackle. You build your team around a quarterback. 